Hi everybody, welcome back to the Masterflow Plumbing YouTube channel. Today we're going to do a brief video here on compression fittings. Before we begin though, I want you to click that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. So anyways, compression fittings. Uh, compression fittings have their place in the plumbing world. They're, they're commonly used. We see them on shutoff valve. Dishwashers have compression fittings. Uh, there's all kinds of things basically that have compression fittings in the plumbing world. However, in this particular case, we're going to do a demonstration using a 5 8 OD compression coupling. This would be used for doing a repair. Maybe if you had a, a split in a pipe and you needed to put two pieces of copper back together, uh, this is a way to do it without having to solder those two pieces of copper back together. So let's talk about the main components of it. You know, you're going to see you actually have two nuts and two brass ferros on each end of it. Okay, so there they are. You got all that, and then you got the main body of it right there. I'm going to teach you guys how to actually do this the proper way, and, and so you don't have too many issues with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually use it to actually join two pieces of copper together like that. So, one of the things I like to do, and I, I find it smart, I, I, I think it's actually... Uh, comes from my mechanical ability with working on motorcycles and cars and stuff over the years uh, using anti-seize to make sure I get a nice even torque on things so I just use my my green stuff my thread my all-purpose uh, thread sealant that I use for just about anything I need to seal threads with however in this case I'm not really trying to seal anything I'm going to use this though as more or less a lubricant and an anti-seize agent uh, to actually make sure I get a nice even torque on my compression fitting so what I do is I just lightly put some of this on the threads again I'm not trying to seal anything so I just put that on there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my nut right here you can see which way this goes on. It's going to go on here like that. I'm going to take my ring. And these rings are, they don't have to go on any specific way. There's no wrong way. They just go on. And they can be a little bit tough depending on your piece of copper that you have right there. And wouldn't hurt to actually deburr that end. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. We're going to put that on there, make sure it's on all the way. We're going to get this as tight as we can by hand. Just like that, we're going to do the other side pretty much the exact same way. Again, we're not trying to seal anything. We're just going to make it so that someday this will come back apart again. And we're going to make it so it lubricates these threads. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second. So at this point, we're going to do the other side here. We're going to get our nut on there. We're going to get our ferrule on there, our, our compression ring. We're going to put that in there, make sure it's buried it is into the socket all the way. We're going to tighten it down by hand as much as we can get it by hand like that. Make sure it's like that. Now at this point, let's talk about why I use the thread sealant on those threads. So when you go to tighten these things down, it is very easy to get a false torque on them. These, these fittings are made overseas now. Tolerances aren't always great. Sometimes they get, especially on the chrome plated stuff, like on your shutoff valves for your toilets and your sinks, they'll sometimes get chrome plating on those threads. And when you go to tighten that nut down on there, you'll think it's tight because it doesn't want to turn anymore. And uh, it's, it's not even close to being tight and you'll have a leak almost every time. So the pipe thread sealant, pipe dope, whatever you want to call it, um, lubricates that thread so you get a nice even torque every time you try to tighten it. So the correct way to do this would be to actually hold the center right here and then use your wrench. This particular case it's a 22 millimeter. It seemed to be the best fit. Oh, I got to turn my other wrench around. So I'm holding back on it. And then from here, I'm just going to begin tightening. Okay. Whoop, right there. Okay, obviously that's uh, pretty tight right there. Okay, so I'm going to do my other side. The same way. In compression fittings, you generally want to get them as tight as you can without breaking anything. I don't know how strong you are, but I know that if I really wanted to and I had long enough wrench, I could crack these fittings right in half because I actually do have pretty big arms for tightening things down from working with pipes over the years I guess so but right about there that's probably a pretty good feel um, that's pretty tight right there and you could actually go ahead and 
try to wiggle it and try to pull it out of there and you'll see that it's not going to come out. Um, at this point you could turn the water back on and test for leaks. Compression fittings can be a funny thing. They actually, you could have a leak days from now from one if they're not done properly. So I always tell people continue to monitor for about a week after you use a compression fitting. You just never really know. Basically compression fittings, uh, there's a lot of different configurations. They come in 90 degree elbows, they come in male adapters, they come in couplings, they come in actually ball valves. Um, you know, where if you can't get the water turned off completely and you need to actually stop the water flow, you can actually get a ball valve that actually has a compression fitting on both sides. You can actually get it on there and then shut it off and then whammo, you got the water turned off. So that's actually pretty nice when it happens. I see a lot of guys actually use channel locks how to actually tighten these down. It can be done. It's not ideal if you don't have the proper wrenches to actually do it, then I guess, you know, do it that way. But it's difficult to actually get the proper torque and the proper feel on that when you do it that way. So adjustable wrenches are great. You know, obviously open end box end wrenches are great uh, for doing that. Uh, that's basically it. Make sure you have your wrenches. Make sure you have your pipe thread sealant. Make sure you have your water turned off before you begin. Uh, that's compression fittings 101, folks. Uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. You folks have a wonderful day.